Hey y'all, how are all my beautiful friends doing? Welcome back to Crime Time with Mel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. And if you have no idea who the heck I am, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Mallory. I am so dang annoying. <laughs> Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Over here, I cover true crime, missing and unsolved cases. If that is something you'd be interested in, I would love to have you join this truly, truly amazing community over here. And if you're a returning viewer or subscriber, I love y'all so very much and thank you. So today's video is all about Lindsay Clancy. And this case is literally making headlines everywhere. Everybody's talking about it and I have seen a lot of mixed reviews about this case. And y'all, this, if you were new, this is not a case that I typically cover, but I have some things to say, and I think it is extremely important that we talk about stuff like this. With that being said, this video is going to be extremely triggering, so here is your big trigger warning right here and right now. Viewer's discretion is greatly advised. Lindsay Clancy is a 32-year-old mama of three who is accused of strangling her three precious children and then trying to attempt to unalive herself. Now, I do have to warn you one more time what I have to say in today's video might make some of y'all mad and ruffle some feathers, but this is my honest opinion. These are some extremely hard conversations that desperately need to be talked about. Lindsay is beautiful. She is smart. She's caring. She loved helping people and she absolutely adored being a mother. She is a labor and delivery nurse at Massachusetts. If you are not new, I can never pronounce that state. I am so very sorry. General Hospital and she was on leave because of postpartum depression. Now, Lindsay was in extensive and when i say extensive i mean extensive postpartum therapy treatment sessions she was going to therapy five days a week and her husband also decided to stay at home and work from home so that he could help his wife take care of the daily chores the daily activities and just make sure that she was okay lindsay and patrick have three absolutely precious children. The oldest is Cora, who is five years old. Then there's Dawson, three years old. And Kaylin is their youngest eight-month-old son. On Tuesday, January 23rd, 2023, Patrick stepped outside of their home for just a few minutes to go get takeout for dinner. But when he returned, he was absolutely horrified. And that 25 minute time frame it took for him to go get their takeout food and come back, the absolute unimaginable happened. Lindsay allegedly strangled her three children, all three children, and then she went to go jump out of a two story building to try to unalive herself. Lindsay and Patrick's youngest, their eight month old baby boy, Kaylin, is surviving as of right now. He is in critical condition at the Boston Children's Hospital. Lindsay is currently hospitalized with a police guard and she is facing two counts of murder, three counts of strangulation or suffocation, and three counts of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Lindsay is believed to not only have postpartum depression, but postpartum psychosis. First of all, this story is absolutely heartbreaking telling this story i was honestly fighting back tears um i have a pit in my stomach i can't imagine what patrick is going through what the rest of the family is going through and honestly what Lindsay is going to go through and i pray on everything that this baby makes a complete miracle full Wait, recovery now what i'm about to say i'm not trying to say it for sympathy or trying to make this about me this video is 100% absolutely all about these precious babies. But I also have experience in this. I personally have two beautiful, amazing children. Sorry, y'all. 
I don't talk about this a lot because there is so much stigma involved in this, but I have two beautiful, amazing children and I suffered immensely with postpartum depression and anxiety. The intrusive thoughts that would go through my mind on a daily basis that I literally could not control was so overwhelming. Just me thinking that I wasn't good enough to be a mom, me not wanting to be alive, thinking that my kids would be better off without me. It was literally miserable. Being in your own head like that is hell. And to all y'all that have experienced that as well, my heart goes out to you and just know that you are so damn strong. Don't ever mistake that. But to be going through such a miserable time and something that should be so joyous and you're raising a family and you have these three amazing, beautiful kids and you know you should be happy, but you're struggling with such intrusive thoughts, it is really debilitating. And I don't think enough people talk about this. Now, I never experienced the psychosis part, the hallucinations, the delusions, any of that, thank God. You are at a higher risk for postpartum psychosis if you have bipolar disorder or even any previous psychotic episodes. It is shown that women who develop postpartum psychosis suggest that there is approximately a 5% chance of unalive rate and 4% infant rate associated. This is because women experiencing psychosis is experiencing a break from reality. You are literally experiencing a psychotic state where what you're seeing and feeling and believing is real to you. And to be quite honest, y'all, when she snaps out of this episode and she realizes the magnitude of what happened and what she did, what she did, the guilt that's gonna over overcome her and the shame, I really, really encourage you to even do research on it and look at cases. There are cases out there that are very similar to this. And I encourage you to just show a little compassion. Does this make it right that two innocent babies lost their life and another eight month old baby is fighting for their life? No, it doesn't. But in my opinion, I do not believe that locking Lindsay up in a prison for the rest of her life is going to give Lindsay the help that she needs. I believe Lindsay 100% should be in an institution and I'm not a doctor or anything. I have no professional background. Um, but in my opinion, I also believe that if Lindsay was in extensive therapy treatment five days a week, Lindsay probably should have been in an institution. There is a very, very, very big difference between Casey Anthony and Lindsay Clancy. Again, in my opinion. But Patrick recently made a statement and it was extremely beautiful, extremely powerful, and I bawled my eyes out and I would love to read it to y'all. If you have read it or heard about it, you can just hit that screen a couple of times and fast forward through this section, but I think it's very powerful and I would like to read it. Thank you for all your love and support. The warmth I've received from the community is plausible and your generosity gives me hope that I can focus on some sort of healing. I've seen all your messages and contributions, including some from people I haven't seen in over a decade and many I've never met. I see and appreciate every one of you. A lot of people have said they can't imagine and they're right. They're absolutely nothing that can prepare you. The shock and pain is excruciating and relentless. I'm constantly reminded of them in with the little sleep I get. I dream about them on repeat. Any parent knows it's impossible to understand how much you will love your kids until you have them. Same goes for understanding the devastation of losing them. Cora, Dawson, and Callan were the essence of my life, and I'm completely lost without them. My family was the best thing that ever happened to me. I took so much pride in being Lindsay's husband and dad to Cora, Dawson, and Callan. I always reminded myself that each day with them was a new gift. Callan usually woke up first and would rest his head on my shoulder for a few minutes as he adjusted to morning. 
Dawson typically sang or spoke his thoughts out loud for a while before we'd go get him. Cora was a big girl and would simply walk downstairs. I can still vividly picture her coming into the living room each morning with her hair in a mess, smile on her face. We always started our day together reading books, cuddling up on the couch, and playing with her magnetiles. I loved taking them places, whether it was scooting at Chandler Elementary, vacation, skiing, out on the boat, or Duxbury Beach, one of our favorite places on earth. They gave me purpose, and I never took it for granted. There is a now massive void where that purpose once was. Cora had an infectious laugh and was stunningly beautiful. She was the cautious one, but it was really because she was so caring. She she used to say she wanted to be a doctor and a mama when she grew up, and she would practice by giving Callan checkups. If she was leaving the house to go somewhere, she would pick someone to take care of Caroline and Charlotte, her baby dolls. She had all the doll accessories available. <laughs> So her sitters were well equipped. Before she turned two, she was already wrapping them in perfect swaddles. We would tell her she's such a good little mama, and she loved her babies, both real and pretend. She loved sloths, unicorns, tea parties, going to lunch with Nana and Grandpa, and giving presents to people. She knew everything about princesses, her favorite being Sophia the First. She truly loved her brothers and us, and said it often in her sweet voice. We did a lot of father-daughter activities together, like skiing and visiting San Francisco, or just talking. I loved her, my firstborn, so much. Dawson had beautiful, bold brown eyes that beamed with friendship. He was naturally humorous and generous beyond the norm of a typical toddler, always willing to share his toys with others. For all the love he received, he always gave back more. His best quality was his pure kindness. He loved trucks, tractors, dinosaurs, Paw Patrol, worker guys, and being outside. He was adventurous and mischievous and enjoyed causing trouble, which he typically found hilarious. He was also remarkably smart. We always said if he didn't save enough for retirement, it'd be okay. We'll just live in Dawson's guest house. He would hug me tighter than most adults, and every night he told me in consistent words at bedtime without fail, Good night, Dada. I love you. We had a special bond from day one. He was my buddy, my first boy, and truly a gift. Callan was our easygoing child. I always said it because he was the third child. He had to adapt, and he did easily. He was born with hardly any fuss and was by far our best sleeper. He was just incredibly happy and a vibrant baby, constantly smiling. Our nickname for him was Happy Callan. He was sitting on his own and you could tell he was enjoying his growing independence as he would grab any object within reach. Sometimes he joined my Microsoft calls in the background playing in his jumpy. I would keep my camera on, too proud to leave it off. He started saying Dada whenever I walked in the room. The last moment we had together was our routine. I would come up from my office at the end of the day and swing him between my legs while he laughed and smiled. If I was ever having a bad day, Kellen always knew how to heal me. Perhaps that's why he held on a little longer, to spare me whatever pain he could. As excruciating as it was, I was fortunate and grateful to feel his warmth until his very last moment. Faith was my only hope of believing he felt mine. Kellen died with enormous courage despite being so little. Maybe it was his way of demonstrating what I need to do to press forward. I'll always try to draw inspiration from him. He'll always be my little hero. I want to share some thoughts about Lindsay. She's recently been portrayed largely by people who have never met her and never knew who the real Lindsay was. Our marriage was wonderful and diametrically grew stronger as her condition rapidly worsened. I took as much pride in being her husband as I did in being a father and felt persistently lucky to have her in my life. I still remember the very moment I laid eyes on her and can recall how overcome I was with the kind of love at first sight you only see in movies. It really didn't take long before I was certain I wanted to marry her. We said I love you to each other multiple times daily as it were a reflex. We habitually started every morning with a passionate hug, yielding a sigh of relief like we had received the perfect medicine. If too much time passed without a hug, she'd look at me and said, did you forget? We mutually understood the reality that people can have bad days, but we stuck to the rule that when one of us got lost, the other was always there to bring them home. Always. 
She loved being a nurse, but nothing matched her intense love for our kids and dedication to being a mother. It was all she ever wanted. Her passion taught me how to be a better father. I want to ask all of you that find it deep within yourselves to forgive Lindsay as I have. The real Lindsay was generous, loving, and caring towards everyone, me, our kids, family, friends, and her patients. The very fibers of her soul are loving. All I wish is for her now is that she can somehow find peace. I promise I'll put all my energy into healing and rediscovering my purpose. I owe that to all of you. Dexbury Fire and Police, our compassionate healthcare workers, our local faith leaders, the Microsoft community, and especially Cora, Dawson, and Kellen. I don't know or when I will be able to do it, but your love and generosity will help me get started. I know that love always wins. Cora, Dawson, and Kellen, you gave me so much in your short time here. I don't know if the pain will ever go away, but I will do my best to carry on to honor. Wow, y'all. So... I encourage you to let his words sink into you because if that man can forgive his wife for everything that she has done, because this was his kids, his kids, he saw it. So if he can find it in himself to forgive Lindsay, I think all of us should be able to and just sympathize from human to human of what she was going through and get her the help that she actually needs. And again, my thoughts and prayers go out to these babies, out to Patrick, out to Lindsay, out to everyone that's involved in this case, their family, their friends, everyone. This is just such a horrific, horrific story and an unfortunate tragedy. So that is my thoughts that is what i think um leave me your thoughts and opinions down below please be respectful if you are not respectful and you are just downright nasty i hate to do this but i will delete your comments because this is a very touchy subject to me also and as well as a lot of women out there and i don't want them to feel any type of way reading any nasty comments so they will get deleted okay okay love y'all thank you so much but if y'all want me to keep y'all updated on this case, I will give me a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments as well. And if you are not done watching my videos, you can stay till the end screen. You will see a playlist and a suggested video that you would more than likely enjoy. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. And if you are not subscribed, what the heck are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up that bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a video. Please stay safe, stay aware of your surroundings, and I will see you in my next video. Bye y'all.